So last night, Tom Henderson released an article covering, as he puts it, a town hall meeting call that a lot of executives over at EA had. And of course, some of that discussion is about Battlefield 2042. Apparently, they spent like 20 minutes, according to Tom, talking about Battlefield 2042 and where it failed. And anyways, we're going to get into that. But firstly, uh, there'll be a link to the full article in the description down below, as well as a link to his YouTube channel and uh, Twitter account. Uh, he is probably our only source of transparency in regards to Battlefield 2042 and what's happening behind closed doors, because if it wasn't for him, honestly, we would be pretty much in the dark. So big shout out to him. So... Most of this discussion is spearheaded by uh, Sherlock Holmes, uh, Chief Studio Officer of EA, um, I mean, Laura Meal. I mistook her with Sherlock Holmes because of how uh, insightful these, these points are and, you know, the amazing detective work here. But I digress. So, Miss Meal started off by saying that it's really important to acknowledge when they have misses. And this is certainly the case with the Battlefield launch, which failed to meet expectations of our players and also clearly missed our own expectations. So some really, really good uh, good insight here and great, great detective work on her part, seeing that uh, Battlefield 2042 kind of shit the bed. But moving on. So she, she continued by saying or pointing out uh, what EA's executives and higher ups in the company believe caused Battlefield's disappointing launch. So one of the biggest things is that the Frostbite engine had to be completely redone because of how old and outdated or antiquated the old version was. So that took 18 months of dev time. So in a three year development cycle for a game, 18 of those months were taken to develop an entirely new engine that doesn't give a whole lot of time to actually develop a game. So yeah, maybe they should have, you know, started making the engine upgrades or updates beforehand and then actually given Battlefield 2042 uh, a three-year dev cycle, but that is neither here nor there. Uh, but basically saying the game was on an entirely new version of the Frostbite engine. She also mentioned that part of the problem was the worldwide pandemic. And honest, honestly, here, I, I can like say, okay, yeah, you guys have a point. It was probably really, really difficult to work from home for large parts of the team. It's not the same as being physically in the office with somebody and discussing with them. I know I've been working from home for a long time now, and it's always a little bit different in terms of communication, but that still isn't, in my opinion, an excuse for releasing a product that's not actually ready to be launched. So moving on, she touches on the beta, which according to them, they received a lot of feedback concerning bugs and unpolished areas of the experience. However, they also said that there was a substantial amount of positive feedback from players. Um, I didn't see a whole lot of that. I saw a lot of people thinking there was potential if work was really put in and that was in fact an older build of the game. So moving on, um, they say that Battlefield 2042's bug count ratio got to historic levels for a dice game. So they're pretty much saying dice games usually, you know, have a lot of bugs, but this time it was like next level bugs. It, and well, it, what? If you knew that, why the fuck did you launch the game then if the game was so buggy? Like, what? How? Anyways, they continue by saying mock reviews prior to launch were in the high 70s to low 80s. Now, I don't know who they got these mock reviews from, but... Clearly, there were uh, a lot of people that might not have a single idea what an FPS game is or how it should play. Um, so that might be why it got high 70s to low 80s. I mean, the beta was buggy as shit. There was a ton of things that weren't working. Uh, hit registration being a clear issue. Mouse input being janky as shit. And yeah, I, I don't know where they got these reviews from. But clearly, they need to maybe better assess or... Uh, vet who they get these mock reviews from maybe have people that have been playing battlefield for long like a long period of time L maybe make these mock reviews that might give you a better idea of where the game stands with the community that will more than likely be playing your game and not just some random person off the internet or some random reviewer that has you know no idea what a battlefield game should feel like but anyways Moving on from that, now, now I hope you're sitting down, and if you're sitting on the toilet, that would be ideal, because this this little snippet of information here might make you actually shit yourself. But, um, so anyways, following the game's launch, DICE rolled out its day one and day zero patches to get the bug count down further. On this, Meal continued and said that Battlefield 2042's launch and patches meant 
the game was stable, and the early critical reception was good. Now, critical reception being that you guys paid for reviews is what they're trying to say here. So the reviews that we paid for were good, which honestly is, is like patting yourself on the back. Um, but however, according to EA, things took a turn and that turn was, and Tom Henderson makes a point of saying in italic here, clear his throat, the surprise release of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Halo Infinite. Multiplayer. That's why Battlefield 2042 failed. Not because they released a, a game that was f so far from unfinished, it was actually laughable. It's because Halo Infinite released out of nowhere, uh, arguably, for some, a much better game and probably more polished. I haven't played Halo Infinite, so I really don't know, but that is why Battlefield 2042 failed. It's because of Halo Infinite. And he even mentions in here, Tom, that uh, I wish I was joking. So this is this is real stuff. Um, coming from EA executives, they're literally playing the blame game. I also know people who play the blame game. Uh, my nephews tend to do that every now and then, but they're seven and eight years old. They're not fucking executives at a multi-billion dollar company. That is what, what, what they're saying here is real. They're not, they're not even joking. Or they're saying it the same face because they're no, they know they fucked up so bad that they need to put the blame on something else on why a game failed but that is a that is crazy that is crazy talk that is delusional nonsense now if you're a hardcore battlefield player and you chose to play halo infinite uh, let me know in the comment section i'm really curious to see how those two communities or fandoms you know merge together if there's a lot of crossover in terms of battlefield fans and halo fans to me they're completely different games and completely different FPS genres and I personally have never been that much of a fan of Halo I never owned an Xbox in the past so I never really got into the Halo world and it really wasn't my cup of tea all that much but um, at the end of the day it might have had a little bit of an impact because Battlefield was such a piece of shit that people decided to go play something that was more polished and completely understandable but they're really just passing the buck on here you know justifying the low numbers and appallingly low reviews of Battlefield 2042 on the surprise release of Halo Infinite multiplayer. So yeah, some really, really insightful stuff here uh, from their chief studio officer. I feel like they're just making up titles at this point to hand out bonuses to people. Um, I've, n I've never heard of a chief studio officer. I have no fucking clue what that person would be doing in EA's uh, corporate infrastructure. But anyways, According to Ms. Meal again, the comparison between both games was not favorable because Halo Infinite was a very polished title, whereas Battlefield 2042 contained bugs and wasn't polished. Wow! Ain't that a shocker? So the game's poor Steam reviews were put down to PC players having performance cap, which players on Steam found upsetting. Yeah, having a really good computer and running at an abysmal maybe 70 frames on high at 120 players, sometimes even dipping down in the low 40s. Yeah, that, that would be pretty upsetting, and probably more so for people who have, according to them, the minimum or recommended specs to play the game and barely getting a solid 60 FPS or let alone 30 frames per second, so yeah, kind of pretty bad. So in addition, negative player feedback overall was focused on three key areas, which EA would further elaborate on. So bugs in performance, game design, and feature choices, the game not aligning with player expectations. I mean... You guys had a winning formula in past Battlefield titles with classes and, you know, maps that aren't gigantic and vehicle balance that's proper instead of being all over the place and a game that's actually, you know, engaging to play and fun. Um, and, and now you go and just r scrap all that, all that hard work that you've done over the past two decades, perfecting a formula for the Battlefield franchise and just completely turning it on a dime and expecting the same players to come back. So that might have been one of one of the issues here uh, why it didn't align with player expectations but you know you don't have to be a genius to figure that out so on the bugs and performance ea acknowledged that the company has historically had bug issues with dice games at launch and that the bug count for battlefield 2042 did fall into the range that they would have expected when compared to other launches so what basically what they're saying here is we know that games that are released by dice in X amount of years are buggy, but we release them anyways because we really don't care and fuck you, give us your money. Um, and she also points out that Andrew Wilson commented on the latest EA quarterly earnings call saying that DICE historically is very good at adapting games in live service. 
no they're not uh you know they have we have proof of that in battlefield 5 and even star wars battlefront 2 which took quite a bit of time before becoming the game that it is today uh so connecting with the community that's also false they really suck at community and connecting with people and getting the game to the place that the players expect uh at this point we're starting to expect not a whole lot i mean a lot of people are starting to think that Battlefield 2042 probably will get a year of content that they are legally now obligated to provide because they sold gold and ultimate editions, including a year one pass with X amount of maps, X amount of operators and battle passes. But I think other than that, a lot of people aren't expecting the game to get that much long term support. Uh, so Meal acknowledged that player expectations have changed when it comes to live service games and that it wasn't the right choice to remain anchored to the company's standards in comparison to previous DICE games. So yeah, just a lot of really top-notch detective work and insight on the part of EA executives as to why Battlefield 2042 is the utter shit show that it is today. Um, but I think we're going to stop the video here. I think that's enough of a dive into the minds of disillusioned executives. Um, yeah. Anyways, let me know what you think about all this in the comment section down below. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.